right, sup my fellow space nerds, welcome back to the Path of Rage and our weekly roundup of Star Citizen information. We got a bit from Star Citizen Live and from Inside Star Citizen all about jump points and fire propagation uh, coming in 4.0. Got a fair bit to go over, so let's get right into it. First things first with the 3.24 patch, uh, it is currently still in wave one and at the time of recording there is supposed to be another PTU build uh, coming up later on tonight. I don't know how that's going to go or if that will even happen, but they do hope to get into wave two as soon as possible, hopefully within the next couple of days. As it is, they continue to knock out bugs and test the current build, so leaving that as it is, moving on. Inside Star Citizen was all about fire propagation and how fire is going to work in 4.0 and beyond. Fire will be coming in 4.0 for ship interiors at first and will be tied to the resource and engineering systems. Fire can be caused by ship items being damaged or eventually breaking down if they're not maintained properly. Weapons and explosions can ignite fires, as can a hot enough environment, although this latter scenario is also going to be highly unlikely to happen at all. It's more of a extremely remote possibility, systemically, than a reliable occurrence. Uh, CIG says that fire propagation is based on three different variables, oxygen, temperature, and fuel. This means that fires can be prevented by starving them of fuel and or oxygen, or even by extreme cold. Fires will spread according to what material the surface is made of and will start small, eventually spreading beyond control. These materials will also catch fire and burn at differing rates based on their type. Fires can and will ignite cargo and loose items on the floor of ships, but not the players themselves due to tech limitations. Fire will still hurt players, of course, it'll still kill us, but we just won't see our friends running around like human bonfires anytime soon either. Players can take a burning object from one ship onto another in order to set fire to that ship as well. The devs mentioned how much difficulty they had to deal with in order to make sure the fire systems worked with the networking of Star Citizen as players fighting fires uh, will need to see the same thing at the same time in order to put them out properly. The fire system generates a ton of data, so getting the system as stable as possible in order to make networking and data transfers as efficient as possible was a ton of work for the networking team. Fires will damage ship components, which will cripple the ship, so CIG has added fire extinguishers to ships in order to fight them, and these extinguishers have a limited amount of ammo, which can be recharged at the station they were equipped from, provided your ship has a functioning life support system still. Players can also use the engineering systems to put out fires by cutting off oxygen to an area on fire, opening the ship doors to space, etc. All of this is supposed to be coming out in 4.0 at the end of the year in its first iteration and will be added to after that. Moving on to Star Citizen Live, this episode was focused on jump points and how they will work. One thing that CIG mentioned that was kind of different to what they have said in the past about Pyro was that Pyro will now have a tiny section of, around, of it around the jump point itself patrolled by security forces like in Stanton. This will be done in order to prevent jump point trolling and griefing, while the Pyro system itself will be entirely lawless beyond that limited jump area. Players with a level 3 crime stat will not be able to use the main jump points in the first iteration of 4.0, so players will have to clear their crime stats first in order to jump between Pyro and Stanton. The devs did point out, however, that Pyro is not monitored like Stanton, so players engaging in PvP murdering in Pyro won't be gaining crime stats except in the monitored area immediately around the jump point itself, and CIG has said that there are ways to clear crime stats in Pyro should the need arise. Using the jump point itself will use quantum fuel, but players will not be able to even attempt the jump without enough fuel to actually complete it. Falling out of the quantum tunnel will also not be a shortcut, quote unquote, to the destination, as it will require the ship to be damaged enough for the jump drive to fail. 
Not only will falling out of the tunnel result in a fair bit of damage to the ship overall, players will find themselves at the very edge of one of the two systems connected by the tunnel. Players may not have enough fuel from that point to even reach a destination at all, or even if they do, the quantum jump to get to any near location is going to take a fair bit of time itself depending on the distance. All in all, staying within the jump tunnel and making it through to the other end will be player's best bet. Navigating the tunnel itself will require player input, however, with the turbulence of the tunnel affecting ships differently based on their size. So no getting it into to quantum and just walking away from your computer. You will have to actually guide the ship through the tunnel. Smaller ships will experience more of this turbulence while larger ships will experience less so. This is balanced out by the need to avoid objects within the tunnel, with smaller ships having more room and agility to maneuver than the larger ones. The devs also said that transient tunnels will be much more difficult to navigate than the larger, more stable main jump points. CIG did say that combat will not be possible within the jump tunnel as ships will need to be in nav mode to even remain in the tunnel, so no weapons there, and anything outside the immediate vicinity of your jump drive is immediately ejected from the tunnel, including fire from handheld weapons fired out of the ship at another one. Uh, they also said that ships cannot be towed through a jump point as again they have to have an active working jump drive. Uh, but they can be carried within another ship. When it comes to entering the uh, jump point itself, players will not have to sit still in space in front of the jump point while waiting their turn to use it, again to prevent trolling. The devs said that once players have contacted ATC, if they can't just go straight away, they'll be put into a queue that extends in a massive area around the jump point, the station nearby, and a huge section of the surrounding space. Players can move freely within this area, they can defend themselves against enemies if need be, all while maintaining their place in the queue. There will also be security forces within these areas, such as automated turrets and UEE ships, to keep players safe at the jump points. Regarding exiting the tunnel, the devs clarified the whole shotgun effect that groups will have when exiting a tunnel together, stating that the players would still be within spitting distance of each other, not tens of kilometers away. The shotgun is the, just the needed spread for the grouped ships uh, in order to not rear-end each other coming out of the tunnel. The, the group will exit the tunnel itself from the exact same point, which itself can be in different areas of the jump point, and they will spread out in a small cone from there, basically, just to avoid collisions. Those were the highlights, I think, of uh, Star Citizen Live this week. They also engaged in some future development theory crafting near the end of the episode. Uh, there was a bit more that was less significant or whatnot so i still as always suggest that for both this and inside star citizen on the fire propagation that you go and watch them for yourselves hear what the devs have to say just to make sure that you get the information straight on that i haven't misinterpreted anything in any case that's our coverage for this week i uh, will see you next week if you like this video and thought i did a good job give me a thumbs up if not thumbs down as always sound off what you think about all this information in the comments below uh subscribe to help me grow the channel it really does help and the youtube algorithm sucks lately uh it's it's really really harsh right now so every little bit helps subs and comments please i appreciate them all in any case i do hope you enjoyed the video and found it informative and i will see you in the next one folks have a good one